What's up YouTube? Delusion here from Dell Does. Today I'm bringing you part one of my Gideon hero guide. Um, basically what I'm focusing on today is just how I play the hero, uh, uh, how I use the skills, what skills I build, and as far as the deck is concerned you can check that out in part two. I'll go into more in-depth analysis on that, but you will see some of the cards that I use today anyway. Just first of all, let's just, just check this out. Team props. Thank you Ghost Fable. Only dead once. Alien vs. Pred420. Guys, only dead once. This is like his second game in PvP. Five or six games total in Paragon. He's in PvP. PvP with us. He was a great sport. Yes, he died a few times, but he took the advice really well. And I just want to show, guys, the community is fantastic. There is more good than there is bad. Get out there and play with other people and help them out. Back over to you, Tony. No, 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 no. Look, my name's not Tony. Uh, but anyway, look, basically what I'm doing here, it's it's uh, it's a duo queue. I'm queued with Frosty. The other three guys, I only just met them, but they're, they're good sports. And we had an awesome chat pre-game while we are waiting for about 20 minutes for the game to load. Uh, no, it didn't take that long, but yeah, it's a cool while. So I'm doing a cheeky ward. I, I, I'm going wards straight up. I, I'm confident in the team that I'm with. They they uh, are people with experience. And, um, well, you know, for the level that we play at anyway, and I don't pretend to be any type of pro, but, you know, it, it's an evenly matched game. Um, so I'm getting some vision straight up. Uh, and I believe Gideon to be a good hero to be able to put those wards out because if I did need to, I could quickly select my, my uh, teleport and, and it would be no drama. But anyway, I didn't need to. There's no confrontation. Uh, you know, I did see a, a Gideon back there on the right side, but he bailed back anyway. So we're going to continue to take these white camps and we'll roam around for a little bit here and then we'll eventually disperse into our different lanes. Um, so just just quick white camp. So, so basically, you know, this is... Not necessarily always how I will start off, but this game just led me to be taking wards to start off with. And um, that works in this situation. Giddy, giddy, yum, yum. The giddies. Yeah, the goodies, bit of a throwback there showing my age. Those guys have seen that TV show. How freaking awesome was it? So Gideon, who is he? What is he? Well, he's a caster. He's recommended role as a pusher, and I think he's one of the best pushers in the game, personally. He's certainly my favorite to split push. I have a lot of fun with this guy. His attack type is ranged, he uses energy damage, and his affinities are intellect and corruption. So, corruption. Do we think he's a little bit of a badass here, guys? I don't know. We'll have to wait for the lore to come out. Personally, I reckon he's being chased through the galaxy by Murdoch for creating an ability to warp time space and matter around him. <laughs> His basic stats starts with 2 basic attack power, 9 ability attack power, 3 durability, 7 mobility, and his difficulty rating to use is a rating of 4. Now, I've got these stats straight from the website. I'm not sure if they're still accurate, but hey, let's roll with them anyway. I think he's uh, quite an easy character to get hold of, but if you really want to use him to his maximum potential, hmm... I wouldn't rate him a 4. I think that 4 is just associated to how easy he is to pick up and maybe roam with. I don't know. Anyway, let's take a little bit of a look of how I stylize this hero. What's this? You dare take a tower? You shall feel the wrath of my ultimate! Now guys, I don't normally use my ultimate like that. I don't think that uh, using Gideon's ultimate while standing on the ground is the best way to use it. Personally, I feel you should be off the ground, more than likely at the maximum extent to which your portal can get you up in the air above the enemies when you're dropping that ultimate. However, in this situation, I could see that these guys were pushing quite hard. I don't think that they were aware that I was coming in to back up the Sevrog, and I didn't think that they had any much ability to escape because I had an ability to catch up if they did, such as Twin Blaster, who there tried to run away from me, and it resulted in a double kill. Yeah, whatever, Del. Sevrog did half the work. You just came in and stole those kills. No, that was a securing of those kills. Anyway, let's get on to his abilities and how I build those abilities. So, what does Gideon have? Well, he has a passive. A passive that he keeps for the entire match. It's 16 energy penetration. From the start, guys, 16 energy penetration. That's why he can hit so hard. And that's why, if you're ever laning against a Murdoch, push up on him. Push up on Murdoch's grill and start belting him in the face with your left clicks. He has Portal Blast. That's his left click. Dark Tether. He has Cosmic Rift and he has Torn Space and then of course the Black Hole. <laughs> now Cosmic Rift is his main attack. That's where you drop a big pile of rocks from the, the sky onto someone's head. Like a big pile of rocks onto their head and it is epic the animation. As well as the, the intensity of being underneath it when it falls to the ground. It's, it's awesome. Okay so you can see the way that I'm building my skills there on the bottom. I build 1 to 15 and I don't at all build Dark Tether. Guys I don't rate it. I don't see the value in it. Other people can rage at me and say oh you don't know how to play Gideon that's one of the best skills. 
rules. You can tie people down and force them to get a full friggin' rocks on their head, blah, 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 blah. You can combo, you can come in and blah, 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 blah. I don't care. I don't see any value in it. I think it's a waste of points. I would rather have more power in my left clicks for those minions that don't get one shotted by my Cosmic Rift that I can then take out with my left click. Or if I need to left click a hero down after they've just gotten away from my ultimate or just gotten away from my Cosmic Rift. So this is just how I build it. Q and E. They may switch depending on the start of the game. Guys, it might be different. Like, like I said before, if I'm in there and I'm uh, warding an enemy camp or whatever, oh, a little bit of a boost there. We got this, guys. Just focus on the creeps. We can do this. Yeah, go Sparrow. Awesome. Anyway, so if I'm in an enemy camp or, or and I'm getting jumped, then yes, I will run with my torn space first. But more often than not, it's Cosmic Rift. Anyway, it changes. And if it does change, you just alternate the pattern in which you're purchasing those skills, guys. So I'm going Cosmic Rift, Torn Space, Cosmic Rift, Torn Space. Then I'm going my ultimate, level five. Level five is always the ultimate. Then from there, I'm going basically alternating my Q and my E until I need to get pick up my left click. This is this is the build. This is how simple it is. It, it's very easy to follow and, and it works quite well. So th that's how I do it. I recommend you you have a crack at it. Give it a go, guys. All right, so we've got all that uh, kind of stuff out of the way. So tactics, tactics, tactics. Gideon tactics. As you can see right now, I am not with my team at all. In fact, the majority of them are in the left lane. We've got one in the center and I'm on the right lane, just splitting that lane, pushing it myself. This is one of the main things you want to do with Gideon. You want to be pushing lanes, pushing lanes where your team isn't, pushing lanes where where the enemy isn't. But, and you know, sometimes it's hard because you've got to rely on your team to be able to 4v5. If that actually becomes an issue for them, then you want to try and back up their team fight as best you can as well. And then you just result back from maybe to, instead of killing four or five creep waves, just kill one or two and then go and support the team again. But split push everywhere the enemy isn't. Use the map, have the wards out, use some intuition. If there's no one on the map and you can't see them visually, either on the map or by scoping around and turning your camera, more than likely they are coming for you. Whether it's one, whether it's two, or whether it's four or five, that is the moment you need to start to back out and then go to another lane. By the time they've wasted time traveling to you, you're in the next lane. Push, 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 push. And it doesn't always go to plan, guys. You know, sometimes you're pushing a lane and like, for example, right now, I, I managed to push the uh, Iggy out and get a kill on him. Fantastic. That was beautiful. He was a little bit lower matter, etc. Blah, blah, blah. But I get jumped by a Twin Blaster. Okay, my skills are on cooldown. I don't want to 1v on him. I don't know if he's got his ultimate. If he pumps his ultimate, he's going to wreck me right now. I'm not ready for this. So portal out and run. Pick a place that he's not going to run or have difficulty running and get out. That's a beautiful thing about Gideon. Giddy Giddy Gorn. He has got excellent escapes. Oh yeah, Dell. So Gideon seems pretty cool, man, but all he is able to do is like push lanes. Well, that's not true, guys. What about Ninja Giddy? And sometimes this is how you do it, you know? You get yourself into a position, you get ready, you drop some rocks, you pull a surprise mother! Beep! And wreck them with a bit of an ultimate. Okay, it didn't actually get him all the way down. Should have gone a little bit further up before activating it. But hey, still able to catch him. Still able to uh, drop some more rocks on his head. And then bam, kills Q. Ninja Gideon. Awesome. Whatever, Dell. What about the ultimates? How do we do them? Well, ultimates can be used in many different ways. You've already seen me use them on the ground. And say, for example, right now, I'm shooting myself straight up into the air and I'm ultimating right above Twin Blast. It disorientates him. He doesn't know where I am. He can't hit me. I'm well and truly up in the air above him. And that's how you really should execute Gideon's ultimates. Yes, I didn't capture as much as I would have liked to in this game on those executions. But ultimately, you want to be using your torn space to shoot directly above the person or the team fight and execute your ultimate way up in the air. So let's cut to a scene from another match where I do have it and go into a little bit of analysis about the use of the ultimate. All right, so with this, we're pushing up on the left lane. The enemies are gonna start to come and react to this in a minute. There's three of us on the push, myself, Grim, and Murdoch. And we're just taking our time, you know, we're helping the creeps get up to the inhibitor, um, pushing it where needed and falling back where we see to fall back. I, I noticed that the Feng's coming on the left-hand side. Uh, Feng is someone who can obviously whack me in a couple of hits. I dropped some rocks just now, just in case he is chasing me in travel mode and I could snare him. Unfortunately, the Grim does get focused on and uh, does get smacked a little bit. Uh, Feng misses his ultimate and he's got a little bit of damage, so he's forced to pull back. The enemy is pushing heavy on us now and they're going to take out our Murdoch. That's going to build their confidence. They rotate in on us, bam, I'm up into my ultimate right above them. I'm going to take out two of them and I'll explain why in a little bit after this. I've dropped down and I'm going to go and start to focus on the Grim now. I'm not worried about the Gideon. I've been watching what he's building throughout the match. I can tank damage from him. He's going to use the Dark Tether in a minute. This is how useful it is. It does nothing to stop me from getting up there and securing the kill on the Grim. Okay, guys? So, let's go back and review this now. And then I, I noticed that our Feng's coming back into support us, so I dodge in a little bit here and there. And this Gideon goes to fire as his ultimate. Unfortunately, not the best positioning for him. And he's just really prolonging his death, which is going to come in a couple of seconds. And anyway, 
So, uh, you know, in review, can we go to a highlight reel, guys? Hey, Dale, what's your take on the way that Gideon just executed his ultimate in this match? Thanks, Austin. And first, let's give a shout out to Epic, our sponsors, for the Epic Cam replay in game system, which we're using right now. As you can see here in this fight, the enemy's pushing up on Delusion's team quite heavy. They're committed, very committed. In fact, they're so committed, they're not even looking at the fact that they're pushing too far forward. You see, now he puts his ultimate up, and we're just gonna go and take a little bit of a scope in here. They're committed so much that they're pushing forward. The Twin Blaster is going to push to the front and to the left. The Fang's going to take another side step, and that means they're going to take two to three additional ticks underneath the ultimate. Two to three additional ticks underneath that ultimate. Over committed. Perfect timing. The ultimate was done right above the enemy team. Absolutely fantastic, Dale. All right, fun sports calling stuff aside. Let's take a look at it and just pause the film here and see what's going on. The things you've got to watch for is what is the enemy doing? How much mana do they have? Do they have their ultimates? Where are they positioned? And in this circumstance, I could see that they were so committed that even the Grim was entering run mode, the Twin Blaster was pushing into creeps, and the Feng was also pushing forward. So I knew that by shooting above the team in this circumstance, they were going to actually go forward a few more steps before they began to pull back, which gives me extra ticks of the ultimate above them. So where I'm positioned right now, I would have liked to have been a little bit higher. Um, if, if I was against the, another team that was a little bit more range heavy on the DPS there uh, and didn't catch these guys from a surprise, yeah, I might have been able to take some additional damage and they could have been able to kill me or, or maybe knock me away or something like that. But this is how you need to execute Gideon's ultimates. You need to pick your timing. You need to do it when the enemy's pushing at you. You port up into them and over above their heads. You want to get as much ticks from the ultimate as you can. So if they do get out of it, you're coming down and either dropping more rocks on their head or you're just able to chase them down and left click them because you're putting points into your left click. So you've got a bit more punch there as well. So this is how I try and always land things. It doesn't always work like this. And sometimes you're going to be using your ultimate on the ground for different circumstances and situations. But anyway, guys, I hope you've enjoyed uh, my uh, view on how I play Gideon. And uh, I hope that you'll check out the uh, build analysis that I'll be releasing over the next few days as well. Thank you very much for watching. If you did like the video, please give it a like. Please give it a thumbs up. And please subscribe to my channel. And I'll try my best to bring as many more videos as I can in the way that I play things. And hey, hopefully you get something out of it. Take care.